In this video, I'm going to break down my strategy for which types of drywall and how many layers of drywall I installed in my basement music studio. My goal is to have a soundproof studio where I can make music without disturbing anyone else, and also avoid having sounds from the rest of the house bleeding into my recordings. This one's a bit complicated, but I'll simplify it as much as I can. If you've been following along, you won't be surprised to see me showing this diagram from Roger Vey's book, Home Recording Studio, Build It Like the Pros. The double wall technique with two layers of drywall on each side is a tried and true method using standard construction techniques. Let's do a quick refresher for those of you who haven't seen this before. As a reminder, STC ratings focus on the frequencies occupied by the human voice. They don't cover frequencies below 125 Hz, but they provide a rough ballpark of how much sound will be attenuated. A standard residential wall with 2x4 wood stud framing and a layer of drywall on each side can achieve an SDC rating of 33. If you fill the wall with insulation, the SDC goes up to 36. I'll skip over the next two because nobody is building a soundproof room like this. At least I hope nobody is. The walls with STCs of 40 and 50 are only meant to illustrate how important it is to put drywall on the outside layers only. If you have two separate 2x4 wood stud walls with an air gap in between and one layer of drywall on each side, you can achieve an STC rating of 57. And if you add a second layer of drywall on each side, you can achieve an STC rating of 63. This last strategy is the foundation of my design for soundproofing my studio. It's important to know Note that the goal is to have a consistent strategy around the whole studio in 360 degrees. Any hole in the drywall for things like windows, doors, electrical, and HVAC are weak spots that require careful attention to detail. I've left a link to my full series of studio build videos in the description so you can find out how I've tackled each of these problems. Let's talk a bit more about drywall because there's a lot of options available. 5 8 inch drywall is typically recommended for soundproofing applications, and this is for the weight, not for the width. One of the core principles of soundproofing is that you absorb sound with mass. The more mass you have, the more sound you can attenuate. If you need more than 60 to 70 decibels of isolation, you're better off going with sand-filled concrete blocks for walls rather than drywall. In this case, you'd need to be building a standalone structure with its own concrete pad that's thick enough to hold all that weight, and you'll need a structural engineer to verify your plants. For drywall, there are typically three options you would choose from. A 4 foot by 8 foot sheet of 5 8 drywall weighs approximately 72 pounds. Ultralight 5 8 inch drywall is 56 pounds. And ultralight half inch drywall is 39 pounds. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you know that I used isolation clips to help isolate impact noise. This is things like walking, running, doors closing, or in my case, a jungle gym in the next room. I use DE90 clips on all the walls. These have a rubber isolator and you can learn more about it in my framing in an isolation video. I've been learning that this is a critical step for those of us building a studio in our homes. Anytime your studio is in a shared building, it's important to not underestimate the importance of isolation. I'll get into that in more detail in a moment. When it was time to do the drywall for the studio, my family was about to get a dog and I was in a rush to get things done in advance. I hadn't fully explored this topic and chose to go with ultralight 5 8 drywall, not realizing I could have gone with standard 5 8 inch drywall. We hired a contractor to install the drywall and this saved a lot of time, along with the strain of carrying all that drywall from the garage to the basement. This means I haven't maximized the sound attenuation of my walls, but I actually wouldn't go with full weight 5 8 inch drywall if I were to do it again. A mix engineer I follow recently posted a few videos about getting a professional studio designer to build a music studio in his basement. They use two layers of drywall and a layer of plywood in between. This is such a brilliant solution because you can easily mount things on the wall anywhere you want. Stud finders usually struggle with the extra layer of drywall, which makes it harder to find studs when you need them. Obviously, a 2x4 wood stud is going to be a lot stronger than plywood, but typical acoustic panels won't be too heavy for plywood depending on how you mount them. And all it takes is a bit of math to figure out what combination of drywall and plywood is equivalent to two layers of 5 8 inch drywall. I found the weights of typical drywall and plywood boards on the Home Depot website, along with the cost in my local currency. Then I listed six different combinations of layering, along with the weight, weight per square foot, cost, and cost per square foot. What's interesting is there's a direct correlation between weight and cost. Two layers of 5 8 inch drywall is the standard build, and most isolation clips, including resilient channels, are rated to hold this much weight. My recommendation would be to use two layers of half inch drywall with a layer of 3 quarter inch plywood sandwiched in between. This is the closest option I calculated without going over the weight of two layers of 5 8 inch drywall. If you're going to do something similar, make sure to double check the weight of the materials in your local area, along with the weight capacity of the isolation clips if you're using any. 
I mentioned earlier that isolation is really important, and I've learned this the hard way. I was trying to save ceiling height, so I used resilient channels rather than isolators with a rubber connection point. I had a lot of confidence that resilient channels would improve the isolation, but having used this room for the last few months, it's been really disappointing. My studio was supposed to give me the freedom to record whenever I wanted, no matter what other people were doing in the house, but I have to record my audio for these videos when no one else is making noise. This was the kind of issue my studio was supposed to solve. When I was creating my previous video about insulation, I was debating whether or not I should invest the time and money to rebuild the ceiling. It was then that I had a light bulb moment when looking at the diagram I showed at the start of this video. Notice that the STC of 36 and the STC of 57 each have one layer of drywall on each side. The only difference is the second wood stud frame. Then if you add a second layer of drywall to the outside of each frame, you get an STC rating of 63. I finally realized that adding a second wall increases the STC rating by 21, whereas the second layer of drywall on each side only increases the STC rating by six. That's insane. If there's only one thing you take away from this video, remember the value of isolation. Mass is critical, but isolation appears to be at least as important. I would say that's true in a shared building like a home where sounds can travel through the structure into different rooms. You need to fully isolate your studio from the rest of the structure to get meaningful levels of sound isolation. I'm I'm currently on vacation and will be rebuilding the ceiling using Sonus clips. These are essentially the same as the DE90 clips I used for the walls, but made for use with furring channels. Hit subscribe to be notified when that video comes out. I'll do before and after recordings so you can hear the difference isolation makes. Before we end this video, there's a few more important details I need to highlight. The first is resonance. I first read about it in the Master Handbook of Acoustics. Any wall assembly will have a resonant frequency, a bit like a drum head. And if you've got a double stud wall with the same two layers of drywall on each side, they will resonate at the same frequency, which will make it easier for that frequency to pass through the rooms. The easiest fix is to use different weights of drywall. I chose to use ultralight 5 8 inch drywall inside the studio and ultralight half inch drywall everywhere else. There's lots of combinations you could use. It doesn't even need to be two of the exact same types of each layer. This is a simple step to take, so I'd recommend doing it. A second issue we can't ignore is air sealing. It's critical to seal all the edges in between each layer of drywall. I used Acoustic Seal because this was the only readily available option in my area that would stay flexible over time. If you use standard caulking, it will dry out and crack within a few years. You need a product that will stay flexible so that no air can get through. Wherever air can travel, sound can travel. Acoustic seal can be incredibly messy, but it works. I was doing some work in my attic last summer and found a couple spots where acoustic seal was used 20 years ago. It was still soft. Air sealing around electrical boxes requires a different approach. I used putty pads to cover the outside of the electrical boxes, and I explained this in my video on electrical. I forgot to talk about light fixtures though. I'm super happy with the strategy I developed for my lighting. I plan to install six pot lights, but I don't want six large holes in the ceiling. I also need to account for acoustic panels on the ceiling, because I plan to cover almost the entire ceiling with acoustic treatment. I decided to have a single electrical box in the middle of the ceiling, which I currently have connected to a single light fixture. When it's time for acoustic treatment, I'll mount the pot lights in the acoustic panels and run wire from the electrical box to the lights. I also installed a slim half inch tall electrical box so that I have one of the layers with only a small hole for the cable. This is a great way to maximize isolation. The highest level of isolation you can get for electrical connections is to install metal boxes on top of the drywall. This means you only have a small hole for the wire to go through. But there's a couple caveats with this approach. The first is visually this only makes sense when you're going to install it through or behind an acoustic treatment. If there's nothing covering it, it looks pretty terrible. The second is your electrical inspector might not let you do it this way if you're doing electrical yourself. They will probably want to see all the grounds connected to each box during the rough-in stage. If you've hired an electrician, you should have more flexibility. I mentioned earlier that my doors aren't sealed. That's a whole challenge unto itself, and I'm following closely with the strategies Roger Vey outlined in his book. Once I've rebuilt the ceiling, I'll seal the doors and post a video about it. Lastly, when you have multiple layers of drywall, you'll need to double up the studs in your corners. Otherwise, you'll have a hard time putting in screws once you get to the second layer.